Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to give you guys my explanation slash rundown of Torchlight 3's endgame. Now before I continue this video, I just want you to know that I am not really very happy with their current endgame. It's pretty bland in my opinion. My first impressions video uh, that I made, I, I did have a very fun time leveling in the game, only to be pretty disappointed when I got at endgame. So let me just go ahead and jump in and explain to you guys what $40 is going to buy you with this game. So, uh, I'm level 54 on the hardest difficulty. I got to end game, which is basically completing the campaign somewhere in my upper 40s, 48, 49 or so. Uh, so let me just go ahead and jump in with this character. We are playing the engineer. Um, on the engineer, I have went into the conductor skill tree, which is really, really broken and not balanced in any type of way, which you'll see as we will melt bosses. Uh, I haven't even allocated all my skill points, mainly because respecting is a little annoying and I don't know what works with what, so don't worry about the skill tree customization yet. So, uh, after you have completed the campaign, you will pretty much go to your fort. From your fort, you will have a new placement building called the Fazir's Dungeon. Along with getting the Fazir's Dungeon, you will also get an Enchanter's Altar. Now, there's a bunch of resources that you gather that I explained in my first impressions video, I assumed that was used for crafting at endgame. There is no crafting. That's a lie. That's complete bait. The developer stated that there's crafting, but that was not that was that was not crafting that us ARPG gamers assumed it was. The crafting is simply essentially putting rocks down in your hideout and 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 like MTX and you know Minecraft stuff. So anyway, we're not gonna talk about that. So in the Fazir's Dungeon and the Enchanting Altar, when you start running the higher tier content, you'll get gear that has enchantable sockets on it. So you can basically find recipes in the new content, uh, and then when you unlock the recipe and you get a piece of gear with a socket, you can use one of these preset things to craft on it. Now, the only annoying thing about this is if you have the wrong enchant on your gear, it is a massive gold sink to try to replace it. I don't really like that it's a massive gold sink considering the gold cap is 20,000, which I capped during the campaign. And most of your gold, I assume, goes to gambling to try to find like the legendary piece that you want. So having a gold sink like this is kind of silly because we already have a material sink, which is this. So we're sinking materials and we're sinking gold into this. Next, when you get here, you'll see that there are challenge levels. I think every time you complete five, you get to fight a boss. The boss is here. So for the sake of this, let's go ahead and jump into nine. So I click this. Because I think I killed the boss previously, there is Berserking on here, which is 40% chance that a monster's damage, attack, and movement speed increases at half health. I believe this is global to everything between eight to 11. So we open these, and we take a look at what's best for our build. Monster health is doubled. This would be my favorite. However, it's Harvest Lucky. 100% chance that you find more shit to place in your hideout that it has no meaningful value. Okay. Uh, movement skills have plus one try. This doesn't really matter. This doesn't hurt me, though. So, double health, I'll take. So, everything's going to have double health, including the boss. But it's no damage penalty. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't do more damage. So, that's basically why I'm doing it. So, click our portal. And we're going to go ahead and jump in. So, this is carbon copy, pretty much, of Diablo 3 Rifting. You know, a light version of Path of Exile Mapping. I'm inside the area, it scales to my zone level, you can see the affix on them here, Berserking, Double Health, Harvest Lucky, and then you have a quest. After you complete the quest, you can go fight the boss. Get him, Choo Choo Train. How do the graphics feel? 
the graphics are nice of the game. I don't I don't mind the torchlight graphics. It's a nice pace from the typical like, you know, gory, very dark, very mysterious, very scary. I mean, it's never really scary, but you know, just dark and grim theme, I guess you could say. Now, the appeal for me at Endgame was I was going to assume that there was going to be some type of way that I could generate a lot of gold by grinding to, like, farm for my legendary, or basically some form of grinding that I could farm my legendary, but you get very minimal gold drops, even in higher tier content, so most of your money just comes from selling stuff, but it's, I mean, I've, I've gambled three gold stacks worth, and I have never found a legendary yet. And I, you know, I'm not complaining about bad drops, I just want to complete my build so I can be happy with and be finished with the game until more content comes out. And what I mean by that is, essentially, if you look at your skills and you go over here, you have like the D3 Conus Cube. So that's basically what I'm looking for, as a piece there. Thanks, Film Player, I appreciate the 39 month, bud. Okay, I'm gonna grab this movement speed buff here just so I could go run to the end. Got to go to the Valley of the Fright. I do wish that when you completed this, it would actually show you the indicator on your map. The quest thing doesn't have this either. When you're close enough, it will show it, but that's after you've backtracked a couple times and etc. So it could be down there or it could be here. Let's see. Okay, it's over there. Make sure we're full endurance and full relic power for our boss. Since he's going to have two times health with Berserker Rage. So he might actually one-shot us. Let's hope not. Okay, boss is over here. Let me see what he's doing. Okay, choo-choo train. Park your ass there. Deep some choo-choo train. Deep some! Two times health, by the way. You get a little pet box. And then your loot box at the end. Then you simply leave, go back to your hideout. Usually at this point you will use your pet to send equipment to town since uh, it's like 10 times shorter. If you're doing it in town, it's 10 seconds. And then I'll just loot through my gear and see if there's anything I can really get as an upgrade. Not really. Put this on the pet. Send him to town again. So, challenge 9 cleared. So now I can go to 10. And then, after 10, you would just go to the boss. You kill the boss and you just... You basically, just that's really all there is to do. Um, I would have liked for them to expand on the fort system. I really thought that, like, something was going to happen here. I thought maybe I was going to have the ability to craft gear or after you complete X amount of content, it opens a new section and then there's stuff to do. I feel like they have a good outline, but there's just, it's not filled in with anything yet. I would really like to see them expand on this fort building. I think it would be really, really cool. I, I like games that have like a central hub you go back to. Like, you know, Path of Exile, you have that map device. You're, well, basically have your hideout with your map device. That's kind of like what this game was like. Unfortunately, this game also has a lot of bugs, which I will not be going into, as I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen them on Steam or etc. Another thing is, when you're doing their content, you do get contracts, but my problem with the contracts is that it, you, you can't really, like, it doesn't feel like you're really working towards a goal. It just feels like you're, you're kind of just completing stuff, and it's just, I don't know, it doesn't feel like you're working towards any goal. Like, I have, I've done this contract already up to... This is 47, but I'm actually on like 150. I don't know how long it goes for. I don't know when it stops. It's just, I don't know. It didn't, didn't really feel like it was explained very well, I guess. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Um, you know, hopefully you guys are finding more enjoyment in the game than I am. 
Um, if that is the case, then, you know, congratulations to you guys. I did have fun leveling my character through the campaign. It was pretty cool just really to play a new Torchlight. But honestly, I feel like I truly would have gotten a better experience with like Torchlight 2 Synergies mods um, as an example, because that would have like a lot more content than this game in its current state. I'm just kind of baffled because I, I really thought that it would, they would do something. So once you reach a set level, it just repeats on the contracts. Best to switch to other contracts. I just assumed that your contract would cap and then you would like move to another one. So, anyway, I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day, except for Sundays at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care, everybody.